check on it. Injury news, first of all, on it. Uh, Alison Jota then, of course, to be ready straight after the international break. So would they be ready for Southampton away? And any further update on, on Chiesa and when he might be available to you as well? Yeah, I think I said it already a few times that um, it's always difficult um, um, to, to exactly tell you when they are ready because especially the last phase of of the recovery is always can always be a few days extra or less. So um, the fact is that they are not there before the international break, and let's see if they can join us after. Okay, you've got. Yeah, Keza is not back before the international break, but that's only a week to go. So uh, we're hoping that he can do things again during the international break, and that he then can join us afterwards. It's been a couple of weeks, so I'm going to ask the contract question a little bit differently today. <laughs> uh, after Chelsea, Virgil said that discussions are ongoing regarding his contract. And after the Arsenal game, he said, let's see what happens towards the end of the season. So when does the contract situations become a problem in terms of your planning for next season? For me, the contract situation could become a problem if the players don't perform as well as they do at the moment. Uh, although, uh, of course, then it's also not sure that that if 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 they perform not as good anymore, that that has anything to do with their contract situation. At the moment, they're all three of them are in a good place. They all perform really, really, really well, and there are ongoing discussions between what Virgil said, the people he had to talk with. So, um, and that's not me, as you know. Uh, I talked to him about other things, and um, yeah, let's wait and see. But um, yeah, I think all what he says. He's completely right in that he doesn't exactly know what his future brings as long as he doesn't sign the contract yet. And no further update, obviously. Not from my side, no. <laughs> Have you learned anything more about your squad this season? The way you've been able to rotate, you're through to the next round of the FL Cup, you've got 100% record in the Champions League as well, and you're only just off top spot in the Premier League. So what have you learned about its ability to challenge on all four fronts? I think you learn... Every day, uh, especially if you are not as long uh, with the team uh, as I am, so then you start. You learn every day um, from new situations, and I said before the Chelsea game was something I learned from them uh, that they could um, sit deep and defend the lead. Uh, the way they came back against Arsenal was really strong, and the amount of games that we have to play that they are still able to be available and play good football. That is also something you see, and then. We also saw during the week that um, that players that haven't played that much maybe uh, have an impact on our team as well, and we will need them during the whole season. So it's good to see that they are already on the level they need to play for us. Pleasure. Um, does it feel strange to be playing Brighton again so quickly after uh, just a few days ago? Does that affect your preparation at all in terms of how you look at this game? No, it's not that strange for us in football because. Uh, in, in, in the older Champions League or Europa League world, uh, you faced uh, mostly, especially if it went to uh, playoffs, uh, you faced the team after a week again. So in football, we are used to playing the same team uh, maybe after a few days. So it's not weird, especially because both teams uh, didn't start with the team and they will start with on um, on Saturday. And it's I think for the both managers, a positive thing because you know even more about the opponent. Although, uh, like I just said, players make the game, and it and it's of course a difference if um, if if a different player plays, uh, the playing style might be the same, but the qualities of the players make nine or ten times the difference. So that 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 changes um, the game on Saturday, of course, compared to the one on Wednesday. And in terms of the, the managers having seen Hedler and from what he's done so far, lots been made about the fact that he's so young. Does that make any difference, do you think? Uh, obviously, if you've got experience, it can be a big help, but do you go with the old saying that if you are good enough, you are old enough? Yeah, I think it's it, that is also definitely true with players. Uh, some some managers uh, uh, maybe need first 20 years of experience to come to this level. They need this and some uh, talents. That's also with players the same, and this can be with managers as well. They just... Uh, have it in their fingers? Is that a saying you have here as well? Probably not. <laughs> uh, so, um, and he's probably one of them because he's done really well uh, at his former club and he's done really well till now here in England also. So, um, 
for him, experience is probably not 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 such a big thing. And maybe I had a bit the same. I think I had one and a half year experience before I joined Feyenoord. So there are exceptions, but in general, I think it's also good to have some experience. But uh, there are exceptions to that rule. Arne, um, injuries deprived you of <coughs> two key players in terms of forwards on Wednesday night in Jota and Chiesa. You left Salah and Nunez on the bench. Uh, what impressed you most about your front play, given you, you scored three goals, you created a lot of chances, and how can that inform your thinking moving forward, maybe? Uh, the good thing was that we, when you look at, the, at, at our front line, that we could play two of our regular starters with Cody Kakpo and Lucio Deas and they had a big impact on uh, on the score sheet of course um, the way we filled in the number nine position was interesting to see because I think it uh, worked out really well um, but in the end uh, I prefer to play with a, with a real number nine but it is uh, maybe now an extra possibility that we have if we have injuries, although maybe with Jogo Jota, who's already, who's also a bit of a nine and a half, we implemented that um, style already. But to play with Curtis and Dom, that those are those are definitely midfielders. With Jogo, Jogo is a striker, so it was good to see uh, that we could uh, score three goals even without playing with a old-fashioned number nine. If you look at what Brighton have achieved over the last 10 or 15 years, it's one of the great footballing stories, really. And in more recent years, their recruitment policy has, has been a, a beacon for, for lots of other teams to try and follow. What makes them such a, a threat on match day? Because they're, they're so positive in their footballing outlook, whoever the manager is, whatever the players they have. And, and they can cause problems for the very best team. Yeah. I wouldn't say whoever the manager is because but if you look at the managers that have come and gone, yeah. they keep on replacing them with, with, with you know with managers that have gone yeah. to achieve. Great yeah, teams. the last three of them were, were impressive with um, with Potter de Sebi and Arius. But that is not whoever the manager no. is. It's a very it's all all three of them are really good managers. Um, and 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 especially in the last two and a half years and I said this before the game as well. Uh, sometimes you tend to forget these things because it's not such a big club. We only talk here uh, uh, a lot about the spending of, um, of especially Chelsea and a bit from Man United. But I saw the stat uh, when Eric left um, left the club, how much uh, in this two and a half year he had spent. But you were on the same list. I saw that Brighton was only 10 to 15 million underneath us. Um, we were, the both of us were just on the sheet. <laughs> but... Um, so that also tells you that it's not that strange that they do so well. They've sold for a lot of money, but they also bought for a lot of money. And if you that add towards three very good managers, it's for me not a surprise that they do so well for so many years now. Hi, Arne. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about something you said with Sandra Vesterville in the interview, where you talk about trying to inject energy and confidence into the training sessions. Obviously, in a time like this, where it's really an intense period of time, where you maybe don't have as much time on the training pitch because of travel and recovery, how important are the players in terms of trying to reinforce that message? I think, particularly in the instance of Gerard Kwanzaa, who obviously <coughs> didn't have the kind of game that he'd have liked against Brighton, and may not necessarily get a chance to get on the pitch again for quite some time. How important is the leaders, the Joe Gomez, the Virgil van Dijk, in helping to inject that confidence back into them? Um, they are important, uh, as every teammate is important for every player. But um, I, I don't agree with uh, with everything you said. So mostly we agree. But uh, <laughs> this time uh, I think Joel played a very good game. The only uh, issue he has at the moment that if he has a moment that is not perfect, it immediately leads to a goal. Uh, that that what that's what happened in. Um, in this game, he was, in my opinion, unlucky. But if you and I know that you cannot judge a player on leaving those two moments out because they are so vital for a result. But he is uh, uh, getting better and better and better, and he was already really good. Uh, so for if, if for him, it's that last step maybe 
uh, to make, uh, which you've already shown in the past that he can play a game without making this small mistake. So he's a bit in a in an unlucky uh, period when it comes to if he makes a small mistake, it immediately leads to a goal. But if I look at his overall performance, I really liked what I saw. He was confident on the ball. Uh, also, when he when we conceded that one, it was not out of oh I'm afraid to make a decision. It's just by taking initiative, and these things can happen, uh, in my opinion. So I liked the way he played, um, and um, yeah, like I said, he was a bit unlucky with the second goal as well. But that is um, for me that that was not his game. So I wouldn't say he is not able to play in the upcoming days or weeks. He is uh, uh, definitely in competition with two, re- two centre-backs that are hardly making any mistake at the moment. Uh, but apart from the mistakes, I think he played similar to Virgil and Ibu with a lot of confidence, playing the ball out from the back, defending really well. So for me, it was a good performance, but a bit unlucky in the end. Please. Liverpool has always been such an information and analysis-driven club. Can you talk about how receiving that information has maybe helped your transition here and then specifically in the instance of playing the same club twice in a row is there an advantage because you are getting this analysis maybe then more than you would somewhere else that last thing i don't know uh the um, the the analyst we get is uh, i get is mostly looking at the videos Looking at looking the game back and then uh, see what they do, see what we can do better. Uh, and sometimes we add to that a bit of data, but it's not like on a daily basis for looking for two and a half hours and all the data I get uh, at this club. There is a lot of data if we want to, but uh, the most the most things we do is uh, looking uh, looking the game back and uh, making clips for the players on a team basis or on an individual basis. So you're not really a, a, a coach who uses data very much? Yes, we do, but not two and a half hours a day. So you get some data and I tend to use it whenever it's comfortable for me. Um, but the data we do use, but I think that's at every club at any serious level at the moment, that's uh, performance related. And that is data that we definitely use uh, because we... Um, we want to keep uh, the players as much available as we can, so therefore we use a lot of performance data. But I don't think Liverpool is any different than all the clubs in the Premier League and I think uh, all around the world. Well, uh, just on Alexis McAllister, who's obviously faces form club tomorrow. Uh, when he was at Brighton, he was playing a little bit with the attack on the field role. He scored ten goals as last season before he joined Liverpool. Played a little bit deeper, maybe. Uh, he's a player that I would maybe play at all three positions in the midfield because he's so comfortable in all these three positions. I think I saw quite a lot of him at uh, at uh, at Brighton because there was a manager I was quite interested in uh, back then. That was the Serbi, of course, and I saw him a lot playing double six there as well. Uh, and in some moments, he also played as, like you said, as a ten. He can play both. Uh, I think he is now in the moment our midfielder plays a bit in between. So Ryan is almost always the deepest. Dom or Curtis are playing a bit higher, and then he's in between. And 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 it depends on how dominant we are. If he is the second ten, or if he has to be the second six. But he's comfortable in both in both phases of the game. He can help a lot with us bringing the ball out from the back and he's also capable of um, making the difference in and around the 18 yard box so we, we like to see him in both situations as much as we can James Arne, you've rotated at left back quite a bit so far this season over, over recent years it's always been Andy Robertson first choice Costas as, as a backup option is, is that now becoming more of a dilemma for you in terms of that, that battle for that spot no, I wouldn't say a dilemma. Um, it is in more positions where we have rotated, so you're maybe a bit focused on the left fullback position, but the left wing has been in under rotation on the midfield. We've rotated as in the nine position. We've rotated, so um, it probably also has to do with 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 Robbo's preseason and um, what does that mean? He had no preseason because he came back injured from the Euros, so he he missed almost complete preseason. 
which was for most of them only two weeks, but for him it was only a few days. So and Costas did really well uh, in that period of time. So um, it has to do with with the quality Costas brings in that position, but it definitely also has to do with Rubble missing preseason. So that's why we started rotating from the start a bit because if a player didn't have any preseason, there was no time to bring him towards a situation where he could play three games in a row because we tried to build up our players for that program. And for him, uh, that was difficult because he missed out on uh, on preseason where others were there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's his situation, and uh, I think uh, was good for him to play Arsenal. And now again, the game against um, against Brighton during the week that that makes sure that he's getting into that rhythm of playing uh, twice a week. Last one there. We've seen managers come into the league, come into new big clubs, and not put as much emphasis on the cup competitions, focusing on the league. You look like Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, they both going to leave first. How important is the FA Cup and Carabao Cup to you? Uh, if it's the next game, it's a really important one. Uh, and um, on Tuesday, it was the next game, so it was really important. Yeah, I played both times. I didn't play our starters, so if, is it then for me not important? No, it's really important for me because I think because we've played so many games, it was a good moment for the other ones to play because at that moment I felt they were better able to win that game for us than the one that have already played so many games. And now we won it and you and you probably tell me, yeah, you put a lot of emphasis on this cup. If we would have lost it, you would have said, yeah, if you miss out on so many starters, it's a, it's a logical result. We want to win every game. We want to uh, compete for every trophy, especially if it's one we have to defend. So, uh, and that is with the Carabao Cup. And the FA Cup is coming in January, so let's think about it then. But uh, people already told me that it is a very important cup to win. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks,